Good evening and welcome to The Square. Tonight we're going to be discussing gender equality with a focus on listening to Rwandan youth who are here with us present this evening. Rwanda has made a lot of strides in making gender equality a core tenet of our transformational and um, agenda, our transformational and developmental vision, our agenda. And tonight we're going to be hearing from young people in the room, uh, who, young people who in this country make up over 40% of the population. And we're going to be exploring the realities on the ground in terms of gender development. Uh, with me, next to me, I am joined by Dio Gracious Mukura Linda, who is a Bridge to, scholar, bridge to Rwanda scholar. Dio Gracious, welcome to the show. Thank you, happy to be here. Is it okay to call you Dio? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, Dio Gracious is a mouthful. Yeah. Uh, I'm also joined uh, next to Deo um, by Dominique Alonga, uh, who is the founder of Imagine Me Rwanda. She's also very passionate about gender equality. Right. And as always, the square is made up by four resident panelists. Um, I am Dan on PC, part of the square. I'm joined by Ephraim Romgenje. Thank you for having me. And I'm also joined by Charles Haber. Good evening, Dan. How Good are you? Evening. Good to have you. And as always, we, we, we also usually joined by Berna Namata, but she's not with us this evening. Uh, so she'll be representing in spirit. Um, I know she'll be very, very excited to be here on this panel tonight discussing gender equality. And as always, before we get into the thick of things, um, we have what we call a recap of the week, even though it's just the middle of the week. Uh, and I'd like to start by asking my co-resident panelists, are there any outstanding things that have happened thus far? that you'd like to highlight? Um, let me start off with something that's a bit mellow and in the spirit of football. Mm -hmm. um, there was a united bid uh, by the United States, uh, Mexico and Canada to host uh, the 2026 World Cup. Um, uh, so it, they, got, they, beat up, they beat Morocco. Uh, that's one good thing. And then two, it's gonna be, the f it's gonna be a change. Um, to the normal number of, of teams from 36 to 48. So hopefully we'll see more African countries uh, competing in the, hopefully Amavubi will, will, uh, <laughs> will go to the World Cup in 2026. Maybe, maybe sooner, but yeah. who knows, okay. yeah. Uh, uh, I had something else, but I'll just pick on from what uh, Ephraim just said. Uh, listening to what uh, Morocco had to say on BBC today, uh, just before the bids were opened, uh, they, they say that, the, the journalist asked them, what if you don't win the bid for the fourth time? And they said, we'll bid again. So I like that determination. But for me, my highlight of the week, you know, last week we were talking about entertainment and entertainment in Kigali. And I was extremely perturbed by the happenings at uh, Koko Bin. Now, Koko Bin is a place I... I, I frequent <laughs> really? by my standards, and by my standards is once every six weeks. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I, I am disturbed by certain other areas around Kokobin, especially the service and the facilities, uh, and uh, hence my once in six weeks. Um, and whatever happened around the discrimination and uh, the albino that was, not, that was de denied entry was extremely uh, disturbing. It just made me think that, uh, that a lot more needs to be done mm. beyond discrimination because if we are going to say visit Rwanda and everyone is welcome and go to all these places, we have to sensitize all these public places to be ready for such, uh, uh, for, for everyone within the ecosystem to, to be accommodative. And, uh, and, and so, so sometimes you cannot blame the bouncers for whatever they did, because probably that's the, that's the, the, the um, briefing that they had from the owners of the club. Mm. Uh, so we need to have a very holistic approach mm. when we are looking at the, at the entertainment and, uh, and uh, sector and all the other stakeholders that, that are within there, because um, it's really... Uh, I, want to, I want to talk about, uh, just coming back to Morocco, mm. um, and I know this is back and forth. I, we had a conversation on Visit Rwanda, and I think for me, when it comes down to what needs to go into the sec, what needs to what needs to be done locally to prepare us or ready us, they we, are, we and Belize said it last time that there's a it's a process and we're gonna get there. But now coming back to football, which I think is in line with this, um, Morocco was supposed to host Afcon, if I'm not wrong, if not the last Afcon. Um, and it was around the time of the Ebola outbreak. And I'm talking of maybe a month or two right before the games were supposed to kick off. They're like, no, 
I mean, like, we, we, we don't want, we don't want Ebola. And guys are like, no, we can, organ they're like, no, 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 no. We don't want, you stay out. And you, when, you think, when you think about it in context, um, they acted like those bouncers at, uh, <laughs> at <Google. laughs> but, but in a nutshell, you can see that there's a double standard, and I think FIFA noticed it. Um, but yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, Charlie. I'd like to agree with you on the, the incident in Kokubin. It was just, uh, you know, it's, it is unrunded, you know, uh, but at the same time, it opened our eyes to what needs to not happen uh, again in, mm. in such establishments. Um, so we're going to get into the thick of things. Um, we are discussing gender equality and having a conversation with Rwandan youth. And I'd like to just add that this show is in collaboration with the Gender Monitoring Office. Uh, and we're very pleased to have these young people here with us this evening. Um, at addressing this topic. And uh, so my first question is to, to, to the panelists. Um, of course, there's going to be a follow-up question by Ephraim and Charles, as always. Um, so to you, Dominique, Nikki, and Dale. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Saranda has made uh, a lot of strides continentally and globally on the gender equality stage. Uh, but one of the key challenges of our gender parity agenda <coughs> is that maybe it doesn't trickle down um, to all levels from, you know, uh, yeah. government to the grassroots level as quick as we would like it to. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that regard, you know, beho behind closed doors, there's of often a very different uh, reality uh, in terms of gender equality than what Rwanda presents to the, to the global know. stage. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, uh, what do you think are the reasons for this? Um, I know there are many, but you know, specifically, and from your personal opinions, what do you think are the reasons of this? And how are youth involved in changing this narrative? Gentlemen first. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for I the like questions. Yeah, you know, gender, <laughs> so switching it up. I think we let the idea that uh, this is how things were, were done before stride. Like we let maybe our parents, because they're likely it's likely them to, for them to have that uh, that mindset that you know women need to do this, men need to do this. Mm -hmm. So I think we should show them all the things that have changed with time, and show them that even that mindset can change. So. We shouldn't, like, we, we just let them, you know, lead the families as they used to, thinking things are still the same, but they're not. Mm. We should mm. also, like, provide examples. Because those examples do not reach all over the country. I would say here in Kigali, yes, you see female entrepreneurs, female business women, and all that. But I'm not sure that happens in all, like, the regions of the country. Mm. So I think if we enforce the idea that change happens and people should go with it, then it, it will really happen and it would reach all the grassroots, as you were saying. And then also giving examples to all levels, because I've been seeing, you know, like maybe the female deputies have been visiting schools. I don't think they've been going like to the deepest levels, like all the schools, because maybe the roads are bad or they just have different reasons not to go there. But those are the places that need it the most. Mm. That's what I think. And, and, and just before uh, Nikki comes in, yes. why do you think are some of the reasons that um, you know, beh behind closed doors in, in families, you know, um, there'll be a different gender equality conversation going on than what Rwanda is portraying as a country. What do you think are some, you know, personal key things that are, are, are reasons for this? I think, I think at some point is men who are not willing to give up all the, like, the powers and all the, you know, the privileges that came with that idea that they are men of the family that are entitled to everything. Yeah, that's the word, entitlement. Mm -hmm. So if they're not willing to give up, if the woman speaks up, mm, we end up having beatings, we end up having conflicts. And most of the time women are likely to withdraw so that maybe they give their kids a chance to live a happy life, not a divorced life or separate parents living, because that can affect them even more. So I think there's that idea of entitlement which causes the women to keep quiet and have to live with that for the sake of their kids. And if the kids are seeing that, who, who knows what it impacts in the boys and who knows what it impacts in the women. Or maybe if the, the lady is speaking to her daughters, who knows what she'll say? She might say, you know, just keep quiet to let the things mm. slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the idea. So I think that entitlement is also one of the key things causing that. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think if I was to, to, to be a little bit controversial, I don't know how controversial this would be, but mm. we have to kind of go back and define what gender equality is generally and come back to talking about what it has come to look like in our context. Mm. So in our 
gender equality is the hope that one day there will be balance between the gender male and the gender female. Mm. Um, and, and what it is looking like, at least personally to me, is that we are, when we talk about gender equality, it has become almost unanimous that we talk about women. Mm. It's, it's like almost directly linked to women. And if I look at it in a, from an urban perspective, which is very, very different from a rural perspective, what, is, what are the challenges? What's happening? You, you see a lot of movements that are raising, rising in, in the, the, the urban areas. And then you see a lot of um, lacks happening in the, in the rural areas. I was doing a kind of informal survey earlier and probably even throughout the, from the gender conference that we had after Transform Africa, asking what's happening, for instance, to the boy child. Um, we have a lot of organizations that are structured, that are formal, and that are researched to help the girl child. We have increasingly a lot of um, sub substance for the, 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 the girl child. You have mentorship programs that are structured, researched, and geared specifically to her issues and her problems. We have entertainment for the girl child. Let's say mm. if, if she has a break and she wants to read Ninya Minga. It looks small, but it's very, very important. You have, she, she has some nets where she can fall into. She's spoiled. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say mm. she's spoiled, but I'm saying. She's catered for. When I did this informal research using social media and asking, some people said, you know what? The boy child, by default, is, um, is already motivated and empowered by mm. society. And, uh, and the complaint is, so we are complaining that the boy child or, or men don't know how to behave, mm. these movements are raising. Mm. But then if we let the society, especially in rural areas where they're illiterate at times, maybe very limited education. If we let them train and raise this boy child, whereas the female is having researched and formal, I'm talking about structured organizations, structured NGOs and programs that are, you know, all the research has been done. So are we widening the gap? Is that a question that we should even consider? Mm. Because the child is being raised by parents who are telling him, Sleeping with a, a virgin will cure you of AIDS. Mm. Yeah, he has no bouncing. The girl maybe, let's say, has Nina Minga, you know, um, or something else. So where is he bouncing at? So the lady, we are empowering her, giving her all these amazing things. She is also by society being trained to marry the boy child. Mm. Is he equipped? You know. So I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how mm. this is happening. Mm. But there, there is a need to, to see, when we talk about gender equality, are we talking about creating a balance? Or are we saying, OK, for generations and generations, the boy child or man have been put here, and we feel like women are a little bit lower. Let's have them hold, and then lift, lift, lift. A counter to that would say, technology is happening so fast. and influencing such change that is happening so fast. So are we leaving someone behind? Mm. How long should we wait for? What is the, what is the definition of this? Have we? So I, I, think, I think just to add to that and just also to right. answer your question. Mm -hmm. You know, one, the, the, the argument for gender equality um, is one that Im implies that we're working across along an, a linear scale that this journey is straight. So one is ahead or one is above and the other has to catch up. And coming back to her point, what happens is that because we think of it in that context, we stop, quote unquote, the male gender. So we don't invest anything towards educating them, towards uh, getting them to that point where they actually understand what it means to, to, for what, what benefits they are in gender equality. Right. Once we change that narrative and we say, look, mm -hmm. It is not a linear scale of one ahead, one behind, one has to play catch up, no. We have to create a system where, it's a, where the mindset right. actually understands and values equality. Um, actually, even beyond equality, it, it values equity. Mm -hmm. uh, because you also have to make up for all the historical losses that are implied through that. So stuff like land ownership, 
resources for women. Yeah, so you stuff like land ownership in Rwanda was a, was a big issue until we, we rectified that. Um, that has a historical implication towards asset ownership and, and income levels. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to inject some sense of equity towards arriving right. at that point. But I want to just say, and coming back to where the problems lie, you know, coming back to gender, I want to talk about gender-based violence. Gender-based violence, when you look at, um, we had a recent, uh, there was something going on on Twitter, mm -hmm. a recent, I'd call it an expose of sorts, that happened, I, I don't know, I think beginning of the year. Is this the Me Too campaign? It, before, 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 before Me Too. This was in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Remember when they were when there was uh, the, 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 the outing of rapists yeah. and but if were, alleged rapists. That was rapists. part of the Me Too campaign yeah. 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 in Rwanda as well. Yes. So, so you find that th when you listen to the stories of reported cases mm. and how they were handled by our dear friends that we talked to last week, the police, um, with, our, well, with our nightmare and his, <laughs> uh, and his team, um, you realize that the work is not... The reason why there seems to be no progress towards solving this is because the people responsible for identifying the problems are not, don't actually understand that they are problems. Mm. So when somebody brings a gender-based violence case, and we can even talk about this even if we reverse it, um, and I know I'm, I'm using like an extreme case here. When you talk of gender-based violence towards men, when a man is being abused in the relationship. Yeah, and it exists. It, it does. Yes. And he goes to police. Even, and, he's, and he repeats, the, 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 you hear these stories, and it's not just one, it's not just two, it's a couple of them. You hear, it's lit he's literally laughed at and mocked. Yeah. It's like, ah, you just go home and sort out your issues. Yeah. You know, and it's like, but that's not how you, because we first need to identify that yeah. there is a gender-based yeah. violence problem, and we need to address it. And I think, for me, if I'm to tell you my own an analysis of why it seems like there seems to be this gap between yeah. representation and what the, the actual, reality. the reality, because we have the representation in parliament, but yeah. are those ladies actually represent, representative of what's on the ground, from right. business ownership yeah. to right. land ownership to uh, the, across the spectrum? Yeah. That, that is, the, I would say the fundamental problem is because we do not, the people responsible for identifying the problems, for us yeah. to come up with solutions, are not trained well enough to identify the actual problem. Can I also say, can yes. I also say that um, somehow, in a very subliminal way, I don't know if that's a word, that we are perpetuating this victim <coughs> mindset among, among ladies. And on top of that, we're telling them, you know what, you're a victim, but now you have a voice. Mm -hmm. we're, not tell, we're not coming at them from a, a perspective of, of you're empowered, you're strong. We're mm -hmm. coming at them, at t telling them, okay, you're a victim. This is how you've been hurt, hurt, hurt. So then it is very natural for us to first want justice and want this. And, and social media is really helping us address these angers, address these intense feelings um, from a victim mindset. And that's where you find, when I was doing research, you find a lot more statistics on women than on men. I had to read a lot more to find the basic statistics on men. Um, for instance, we have, if, if I can just read a few here, 85% um, globally of, of, of homeless people are ma male. Okay. Uh, in Rwanda, 86.6% of the street kids that we, we see here, uh, those who said, Wambayeneza, Wambayejicheri, mm. mm. if you even think they're male, mm. you know, and, uh, uh, but this statistic can't uh, be viral on, on social media or, uh, you know, they can't, they can't, someone won't really tweet them because, again, you have this counter of, oh, negative backlash that may come at you. So what do we do with statistics that say 76% um, of suicide rates globally are male? Mm. Um, let's say 70% of murder victims are male. Mm. Uh, another statistic, 70... Even in, in prisons as well? Mm. Yes. Yeah. And if we look at sub-Saharan Africa, which is where we are, and mm. we look at it, um, we have a very, very prevalent case of child soldiers. Mm. You know, um, we talk about rape and we talk about all these issues that yes affect women and mm. it, for for years to come. But are we also balancing out and say, okay, we have seventy percent of young children under the age of fifteen that are being taken to war zone, bomb straps around them to die for a cause? Are we are we talking about the the, the trauma that those kids? 
face when they come back in the society? Do we have structured organizations that are actually highlighting these things? You know? so, so are you saying that we need to have, when we tackle gender equality, mm -hmm. um, we have to have a more holistic approach at, towards solving society, right. society's issues at large, and that will eventually solve the gender problem? What I'm, yeah, I think what I'm saying is, if for instance, if we step out of, of, of Rwanda, or even if we talk about the, this street kids problem, mm. you know, he will grow to be a man, mm. you know, and he will grow to be, first of all, we have to talk about 86% of Rwandan street kids are male. Mm. Does that mean, and not all of them are orphans, mm. it's about 41% that are mm. actually orphans. Mm. So does that mean parents are more comfortable sending their children to be They're on the male. street and yeah. to children. beg? Mm. So what does yeah. that say mm. about, you know, like how do we go back to society and mm. say in the home, my mom was asking me earlier, does that mean parents are more comfortable allowing yeah. their boy child mm. to be on the street, sleep in terrible condition mm. than the girl child? Mm. Is that because of the campaign that we're doing on the girl child? Is this a result of, you know, umugore, umukoka, or is this I a like result Dominique, of something I like else? the way you, you switched up the, the initial question, which yeah. is you why know, I have some of these questions. But I'd like to, <laughs> Charles, I'd like you to... Uh, uh, I didn't imagine I would have anything to say until <laughs> I listened to Nikki. <laughs> to Nikki. <laughs> Uh, uh, Nikki, it's a pleasure to meet you. But uh, because I've always thought that uh, all is well, mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, listening to Nikki and uh, Deo, it gives me an impression that uh, it's it's back to the same old Rwandan story of being cosmetic. Mm -hmm. So we 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 are painting an extremely rosy Thank picture. You for that mm. that uh, we have X percentage of women in parliament. Well we have X percentage of women in positions of leadership. Of leadership. <coughs> we have women mm. who have access to title, as Ephraim was saying, mm. and so on and so forth. But they are still teething fundamental issues mm. that are not addressed. And, and to me, that is, that is uh, uh, extremely alarming. Right. I did not... Right. Mm. I, and, did not, I, I, I did not imagine that there was actually a problem with a boy child because mm. being brought up, you are told uh, boys were kazitunga. You know, mm. kazitunga right. is a Kinyarwanda word to imply he'll sort himself yeah. out. Mm. 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 So, um, uh, Nikki and Deo, <laughs> I'm happy to meet you. <laughs> yeah. So, we are going to just take a break um, and we'll be right back. Please join us, stay tuned to your screens. We are talking about gender equality and uh, we are joined here by Young People, a conversation on gender equality with Rwandan youth. We'll be back right after the break. Thank you for joining us. We are here talking about gender equality and uh, having a conversation with the youth. Uh, earlier on, I actually asked a question on what do you think are some of the problems as to why gender equality, uh, gender parity, the conversation doesn't necessarily trickle down mm. right to the grassroots level. Yeah. Uh, mm. But these young people here turned it around, uh, as you saw Charlie and, and Ephraim, and said, look, let's even start defining gender equality. You know, mm. the girl child and the boy, and the, and the boy and, and so forth and, and, and so on. Uh, my next question is to do with, and, and, and coming on, building on what you, we just discussed before the break, on stereotypes, you know? And mm -hmm. here I want to talk about, you know, uh, stereotypes to do with masculinity and femininity. And, um, you know, there's been a global conversation, you've heard of the Me Too conversation, yes. where men, uh, you know, are being accused of doing all sorts of terrible gender-based violence acts towards women, um, from Hollywood to Rwanda to Kenya mm. and, and what have you. Uh, and this is a serious issue. But um, the, 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 my understanding of, of positive masculinity, masculinity is teaching men and boys how to express their masculinity through love, care mm. and respect yes. towards women, especially from a gender-based violent uh, point of view. So my, my question is, do you think some of the issues, and I want us to kind of tackle the issues on, on gender inequality, do you think some of them are steeped in the fact that there are stereotypes that we keep on perpetuating from childhood to, 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 you know, to adulthood? And I remember at the gender conference, um, the Transform Africa, yeah. after Transform Africa, organized by the Gender Monitoring Office and its uh, stakeholders, you in particular talked about stereotypes and men. Yeah. Uh, you talked about language, you talked about you know, emotional stereotyping men to mm, be, yes to embody masculinity um, that was detrimental to 
personal development as a yes. boy, as a man. Mm. And I'd like us to just touch on that a bit. And if you could reiterate what you spoke about here so tonight. I think at that time it was more of, you know, men, men will be men. That's a common, a common saying. That means you shouldn't cry. That means you shouldn't, you know, do this sort of thing, like carry yourself like a girl or something like that. So I remember last time saying that maybe the language that our parents used or maybe my father or any person's father used was more of, you know, like maybe to calm me down if I'm crying, like, don't cry, your sister yeah, will say, yeah. Mm. Or maybe girls will see you crying. Mm. Then it grew up to become something that I feared, something that threatened my masculinity, as she was saying. And it's, it's a thing that I needed once, like once in a while, like to express your emotions, to do everything in that sort. Mm. So I also would say maybe there's a thing called depression going on, like a man can't be depressed. Mm. There are times you are struck, stricken down by anything, mm -hmm. failure or something like that. Mm -hmm. But they end up numbing, they end up building all on that and yeah. they have a burden they're carrying, mm -hmm. in, even in further activities. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting rid of all that, talking to somebody, that's why I think like vulnerability, mm -hmm. they ignore it and go on with burdens like to other activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, but you agree with me. I, that, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. I had a friend yeah. who had, uh, in primary school, he had poor grades. Yeah. Yet he was a clever boy because he had hips. Hips. Oh, yes, really? yes, yes. So he was teased about his he physical form. He was teased form. about his yeah. hips, yeah. 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 That, that, make, that makes more sense. Or maybe the idea that your sister is going out, out, she's seven years older than me, I'm four, like go with her. You're yeah. the man. Mm. You're only four, that means she's 11. She's way smarter than you. Mm. If anything happens, she, she will know what to do. But that idea that I'm you know, accompanying her, I'm helping her, ends up tilting the balance, if I would say. So yeah. also connecting to the amazing like, statistics you brought up, I think going in jail, being outside, has something to do with that. Because yeah. the man needs to take care of the house. Mm. In take yeah. care of the house, yeah. I mean. So if they, are, you know, they can be able to afford all that, they may end up you know, going to steal, going to rob, or they end up in jail. Mm. Or maybe sending them out is more like a boy is more secure when out. Same thing as the, the night. So we should send a boy to yeah. beg mm. because the guy, yeah. you know, vulnerable, stay home, helps me home, mm. right? So I think that has to do everything with stereotypes. Mm. Something I said earlier about entitlement. Mm. Yeah, entitlement to that masculinity, entitlement to being the head of the family might cause you not to give up small, small things, mm. not to give up, you know, sharing between maybe generating income for the family. Mm. And if they want to take everything up or maybe if they end up failing, they can't support the idea that the woman is providing for the family. Mm. That causes a breakdown and all these other chain of events that are mm. burdening our country. Mm. And, and you know, you, you t I remember the conference, uh, you talked about femininity. Yeah. You know, there's this thing yeah. of, of the current feminine discourse is about, right. you know, being brash, being bold, yeah. being brazen. But the traditional, you yeah. know, female or feminine, femininity is, is you know, uh, being gentle, or, you know, this sort of stereotypes. Yeah, but yeah. you raised a very good question last time saying, but what if I actually want to dress up? What if I want to do my right, hair? What if right. I, uh, is that something you want to build on in terms of stereotypes and how I, we deal with them? Yeah, really quickly before I go to that, mm -hmm. I wanted to go back to the issue of language. And Kinyaranda yeah. is, is, my, is, my, is my mother tongue. Um, and a very, very simple example on gender parity would be the names we call each other. Yeah. It's, it's a very sneaky way mm. to assign roles and separate. You're telling me that the man is the leader, the, the victorious, the, the, the powerful one. Where the, the, I'll the, actually take it a notch higher, sorry to interrupt. When you're, when you're being um, declared husband and wife yes. at the Murenji, which is the only legally recognized form of marriage in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will remind you that the husband, that the man is the head of the family and he has a responsibility to look after the family. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. but I, I, I believe that's the point that you're raising. I, I just I, I, I'm not very sure I The more be. we repeat yes. at, in homes, because this is vocabulary, mm -hmm. and, and like she said, language, that goes I in. want to take it, it's, not, it's beyond vocabulary, it's actually yeah. law. Mm -hmm. Right. No, yes. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. in the society, what I mean is mm -hmm. in the society every day, these are words we use every day, even lightly. We say, wanje, umufasha wanje, which means, She's, she's an helper. addition. Mm. She's, she's not uh, uh, 
whole mm -hmm. on her own. Mm -hmm. She's a help. She's a she's a she's without a, without somebody to Adam. help. She's, she has no purpose. She's like cute, mm -hmm. eh? if I can say. So I don't know how far we are willing to lead this conversation. Should even such words be considered by uh, Ralk mm -hmm. to to be tweaked, to be tweaked and 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 studied and said, what power does this hold? If a parent will raise their child saying, you know what, one day, one day. How psychologically what's happening mm -hmm. to the child? Mm -hmm. Because that's language. This is pure uh, everyday language, uh, everyday way of We're we not even delving into yeah. cultural, mm -hmm. we're not, social, yeah. cultural, just, mm -hmm. just like language. Like even surface. Or, yeah. Yeah. It's just language. as a rampant, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's getting in there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know Rwanda is very passionate about dealing with these issues. And this is maybe something that never came up. Um, uh, but can this conversation even be had? Can, if we're telling the woman, you can be strong on your own, you can be something on your own, what does that word mean? Mm -hmm. you know, what does that culture mean? And, and we're not even dwelling in the, the gusaba and saying how that, what, what gender stereotypes is that very strong culture. Wait, wait a minute, you have a problem with the gusawa? We can do We can do it now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, is it worth seeing? How is that reinforcing gender parity or is it reinforcing gender equality? Like it, what is it doing basically? Um, but that's something that's really long. Back to the question you said, um, it is true that in urban areas again, because this is a complete different narrative in the rural areas that uh, females are being trained to be this harsh, you know, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. I'm not this and this crazy larger than life human. And the women who naturally enjoy being... Uh, in charge. No, naturally enjoy being a mom at home. Mm. Do they feel shame like, okay, so I'm, I, yeah. I'm comfortable cooking and raising my daughters at home. But I'm Should not I making... feel shame because I'm not yeah. also joining the movement yeah. of let's go boxing, basically? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, al allow me to add to one of the examples of the language. The other day I was talking to a female friend of mine and she said something impactful. So I was like, in Kiaranda, I was like, Chigao. So mm. she's female. Mm -hmm. If I said Chigore, it will have another connotation. Yes. I hope you agree with me. Right. So yeah. I just, was just stranded there, like, this is. Right. Yeah sexism right there. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do. Right. But then coming up to answer one of your questions, I think it's more of generalization. Mm. So yeah, there are you know, women who, likes, who like to cook. So there are also women who, don't like, who do not like staying home. Yeah. So when a person meets that kind of other woman, it becomes a problem. Why shouldn't? Ah, that's very true. Mm. That's true. So yeah. if there are ladies maybe who don't like sports, yes, that's true. Maybe some don't. Mm. But if you meet someone who's passionate about basketball, football, it becomes a problem. Mm. So you have this idea of generalizing every, every woman, every girl oh, yeah. should not like sports. Why? Mm. I, think, I, think, I think I would say, coming back to what they said, and he's raised a very good point, and she's also raised a very good point. I think we need to, in this, in this push for gender equality, we need to preach individuality mm -hmm. yes. and, al and, and just allow it as is. Yes. Because, I, again, we are so different. Yeah. There are some men who prefer to stay home with kids and yes. cook mm -hmm. and do everything considered mm -hmm. societally uh, feminist mm -hmm. and I think or feminine and, and for me I think as a as a young man we 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 talked about we talked about the culturing of children in homes we've mm -hmm. talked about how language impacts them and the mindset this is a journey of a thousand years yeah. Uh, because the, the culturing has been a journey of a thousand years. We have, it has taken us generations, multiple generations, to reach mm. this point. So then the question then comes in how, and mm. she talked about it, and I'll go back to it, about focusing on both the children, the boy, the boy mm. child and the girl exactly. child, and saying, look, okay. And then focusing on our language, improving that, and, and addressing mm. this aspect of culture and preaching individuality. And interestingly enough, if you look at Randa's um, laws around... Uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. So f in terms of homose homosexuals, in terms of um, uh, even just race, we don't, we preach, we don't discriminate. Yeah. That's why even this thing that happened in Coco Bean was yeah. like there was an uproar yeah. because we don't preach discrimination. But unfortunately when it comes to to gender, we want to define roles, yes. uh -huh. and that and that push and, and again it, it takes away from that whole uh, that whole um, 
I would say the letter of what we're trying to mm. preach around individuality yes. and diversity. So yeah. I think if we were to really push for gender equality, we, p we preach individuality. individuality. Yeah. Um, we're going to go to our social media, but we're still going on oh. with this conversation. Uh, please tweet us using the hashtag the square RW. Uh, right now we're going to go to a social media feed and we have uh, a tweet from Richard Rogera. And uh, you can see it on your screens. Richard is saying the problem is at home. The issue of boys being demotivated and then losing opportunities to girls lies back home. Most dads have abandoned their duties. You find that mothers are doing homework while most men are in pubs. Boys have no role models. <coughs> that's a loaded comment. Yeah, what what, do, you, what do you have yeah. to say to that? Uh, and that's what you were saying earlier on. You know, the role models for boys. Yeah. Uh, you know, we might be overlooking this opportunity as we're yeah. promoting girls and the girl child and women and, and having safety nets for them. Right. Uh, they, maybe it's time to have a similar conversation. Right. Um, I'm not sure in equal measure, but, you know, at least increase than what's happening on the ground. Yeah. I think Talking we're to boys, underestimating uh, the power of structure in these things. Mm. It's very structured, the, the women dialogue it's it's very structured it's organized it's backed up by government it's organizations uh, they, there's there's NGOs, an office there's a real stuff. physical yeah. space mm. where women can learn how to be better women in homes in the society and all that um, for every 30 this is again globally for every 30 organization that focuses organization program or project that mm. focuses on girl empowerment there's one for men. For the boy child. Mm. So it's not structured. So we're leaving the, these men to learn from something that we're already complaining about mm. because from the past, it's been negative. Mm. So if we're not structuring, there's an office where male and there's annual reports coming out, there's books, there's magazine pamphlets. Yeah. So we don't have that much research on, on boys. Mm. We don't have development documents. Of, of of Mickey is the first person I've had be pro-boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. But, <laughs> but, 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 but you know, this narrative, um, and I know because I've been in this sort of sphere, it's the fact is the fact of the matter. Yeah. You know, you said linear, but the reality is that it's linear. Mm. And this is, it's a patriarchal um, world, mm. so to speak. I'm not right. even going to say society, world. Mm. And boys and men, you know, for, since time immemorial, um, have advanced mm. to the detriment, you know, of, mm. of girls and women. Right. Mm. Uh, of course, that's changing. It's changing for a fact in Rwanda. Mm. But on the realities on the ground here, especially young people who bear the brunt of this, mm. you know, it's over almost half of our population, um, it's a different reality there. Agreed. But I really like what is coming out of, you know, the conversation here that mm. it's time to actually uh, look at the mm. development mm. aspect of, or for boys and, and what have you. And just before we go back to the next part of um, uh, the social media feed. Uh, my last question is to do with with cultural and religious yeah. narrative mm. when it comes to gender equality. Um, you've all seen um, some religious leaders this year um, who have been saying very vitriolic mm. things against women. Yeah. Um, there was the pastor of, uh, of a radio sh station that was shut down. Uh, more recently this weekend, I saw a, a brief clip of, of a woman preaching and really it was mm. just not towards uh, women empowerment mm. and what have you. And, and, and to Rwandan youth, to you too, I'd like to ask you, what would you say to such leaders? And, and what, what's your take on such uh, things that happen? So if I, if I start, I think it's very sad that you know, we use the religious perspective to suppress some people, because it, oh. it doesn't make sense, mm. right? Because even the word of God, if I would say, evolves mm. with time, right? Uh, I'll probably hold your thought there. <laughs> okay, okay. Say, In my it opinion. Is not, it is not sad because whenever we go to church, we are humble. True. And that is why we are extremely vulnerable before yeah. the preachers. Yeah. yeah. When Raila Odinga had a problem with Uhuru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. when they, they to went church. to church and solved it, everybody clapped their hands. Mm. True. Yeah. When uh, any political whatever has to be sorted, you, 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 you will go to church. Mm. Mm. I agree. When, the, when people were killed in, in churches during the genocide against the Tutsi in, in 1994, two years ago when the Catholics uh, apologized, it was a very big political statement. Mm -hmm. So the point I'm raising is do not underestimate the power of churches. The power of churches. Yeah. Mm. Yes. But so, you say yes. it's very sad that, that people that would use those out. tools. It cannot yes. be sad because it is deliberate. It's sad uh -huh. and no, tragic, it's, it's, nonetheless. It's, 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 
Do, do not be shocked. <laughs> That's the me. point, Dale, that yeah, I'm saying. Do not be shocked. Yes, 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 yes. But it's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So if you allow me to finish, I'm just saying, like all the regions, mm. I've had the chance of studying five of the major regions we have, and all of them from Buddhism, you know, Islamists, uh, Jewish, they all have the same thing in common. Mm. Think about what they're telling you. Mm. Like, define your faith, it's the faith. So mm. uh, maybe Catholic Bible says something about, you know, when your eye is sinning, remove it. You don't do that because you mm. think, mm. right? I'm stressing the word think. So how can, you know, the word of God stress or even any mm. word, I'm not trying to restrict some people. How can it, you know, tell you to suppress some people and you agree? You are a thinking human being. So now, here's, I'm asking Ooh, people whoa, to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I'm asking people to shift. <laughs> Imagine if you were in that situation and maybe, you know, any scripture is saying, you know, suppress these people and you are on the other side. Mm. That's also an important thing to consider. Mm. Right. If you're on the other side, you don't like it to be on you. But if you're on this side, you are enjoying, so mm. you're a bit no, restricted. I can, I can tell you. I can tell Relative you. that. I can tell mm. you about, I can tell you about uh, reli religious leaders okay. um, across all faiths, even political leaders, yeah. who choose to preach a message of div div divisiveness. You know, H.E. said it very well. He talked about we have 50% of our population, actually even more, globally as women. Mm. And, and, to add to that, and to add to that, mm. we are losing $160 trillion. Dollars. Dollars. Because of that. Because and, of that. You know, yeah, and, and you ask yourself, and you ask yourself just logically. Yes. Even now when we move away from the financial benefits, yeah. even the productivity in your life yes. as a man, even the productivity in society, in raising your children, if there is equity and there is a jo joint collaboration, the, the popular dash goes, the popular maxim says, two heads are always better than one. And that's a fact, mm. like anyway. Mm -hmm. And you see, when you find leaders who talk contrary to that and they use scripture or they use religious yeah. books or the yeah. religious teachings, they have, they, like anything else, they've taken it out of context. Mm. I, I, I keep telling people, I'm like, some preachers, if you gave them the shortest verse in the Bible, which is Jesus wept, yeah. Jesus wept. they can preach a whole series Thank you. about, about Thank how you. Jesus wept for your problems, mm. wept for you. And I mean, I mean, and they've taken it out of context. And, that what hap mm. that, and that's what happens. And that's what they were trying to say. Mm. It says, people of the faith and even citizens, when mm. leaders come to your community and are trying to push something down your throat, mm. think. Test it. Yeah. And think as well. Yeah. Mm. Like critical they, thinking yeah. human beings. And, and test it. And even scripture says mm. you should test it. Mm. You know, it even says you shall know them by their fruits. Mm. And this, it's a method of testing to mm. see, is this what's coming, is, mm. is what's being put in front of me mm. actually yeah. what is the truth? Exactly. Dominique, is there something you'd like to add on this? We want I, to I was completely before. shocked by the lady who, uh, got kind of viral on Twitter mm. the other day yeah. about um, how women will go to hell for wanting to wear pants and mm. there's a lot of uh, illiteracy behind mm. that I would say from listening mm. and and you can you can substantiate that to the Holy Spirit told me this directly or yeah. however they want to do it the challenge is there sh we shouldn't listen for injustice and keep calm, you know, and yes. the fact that social media is around, like, that's a weapon that is hopefully going to, 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 to bring the change that we need. Um, hell has had a lot of psychological effect, and it has been used, like he said, to perpetuate the genocide. This, this is the tribe of God, let's kill the others. That's a divisiveness that Ephraim was talking about. And, and, and people will go through incredible heights to avoid hell. And this lady who came through and said on a pulpit in front of, I don't know what the number of that mm. church was, mm. and said, you women are going to hell for dressing a certain way, for um, all this and this. And, and they, she gave herself a, a high authority. Um, mm. As the messenger of God. As the messenger. And it takes a lot of guts to counter her. Mm. in the moment mm. Mm. and it takes even a lot of guts from the government to say okay okay let's see do we have the right to go in there because mm. that's a place where a lot of gender parity things happen a lot mm. and Angry. and yes the government is doing a lot of things on the outside what authority do they have to go in and mm. say 
wrong, okay. yeah. you know? Mm. Uh, and that's something, is it considerate? Is it, what's the line? Mm. Where should the government, the, the gender monitoring draw office, the line. draw the line and say, you know what, this lady, what has, she has said is wrong based on these facts. Mm. Um, is it something that's allowed? Just, just as a quick statement. Um, so now we're seeing the negative sides of separating uh, church and state. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to drop that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like that. Um, back to Twitter. Uh, we have on our screen, this is Jackson. Uh, he's saying, wouldn't it be a great idea, I think he meant wouldn't it be, a great idea to integrate gender equality as part of formal school curriculum, if not done already? Uh, do you think this is a cross-border issue? If yes, how do we bring in a fast-moving globalization? So he's talking about gender equality in schools, um, and putting it in the cu uh, curricula, and asking whether this is a, a cross-border problem. What, what's your take um, on the rest of you? I totally agree with the person. It's coming from the school's perspective, the other time I was at a school and they were playing volleyball, and one of the teams were girls and the other team were boys. And the girls were beating boys like, oh. so they were teasing the boys like, you are letting the girls themselves, like the supporters from outside, you are letting the girls team beat you. Mm -hmm. So that really like brought something like a grief in me, like why aren't they supporting their friends who are actually doing something and yeah. it's, it's in a school. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then I was like, no, this is not for the students, it's about the teachers yeah. in this class. Yeah. So this means if a boy answers the question right, he gets all the praises, then the lady, nah. Or maybe they don't even encourage them to raise their hands in class. Mm -hmm. Which means, which like is a really sad thing. Mm -hmm. But if, sorry, go on. So if they really like incorporate it in classes, like make it maybe one period or something, there will be more things to come with it. Mm. One of the things that will avoid is the bystander effect. Mm. Like maybe, f maybe I might be like discussing with other boys. I know it's a bad thing. Maybe mm. there are languages that are used, mm. but maybe that feeling to fit in. Mm pushes me to, you know, go to on with what they're saying. Call it out, yeah. Okay. And if, if the teachers stress that, you know, you have to be different, you don't have to tolerate everything like that. Mm. Like, even the boys themselves could have called out the other girls telling them, you know, it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. They've, you know, they've merited it, they've done it. It's a great thing. Mm. So many things would start from class, because even those classes, like those students, can go back home to answer the first question. Mm. Like, what happens in the families? Mm. If they're really educated, and most of the parents, maybe back home, are not educated. They will have to understand their children. Actually, the teacher, children can end up teaching the parents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nikki, your take um, on My take would be that that would be a great idea. Uh, very, very excited to hear that someone is thinking that way. And I hope that the policymakers are listening. Mm -hmm. Um, we have seen how fast, I mean, English was introduced as yeah. a language uh, in schools in 2008, was that? Mm -hmm. And it was just... I mean, we adopted, and look at me speaking English. <laughs> at home, we speak French, you know, and motor guys are speaking English, and it's just, it's, it's calm. And I think if we introduce this in, school. in, in schools, mm -hmm. as a class, like you have music, you have math, you have gender equality, and, and, and biology, I think, I have a lot of fears and stigma. Um, I remember in P something, when we were studying the, the reproductive organs of females and males. I mean, the teacher herself was going through the torture. <laughs> She's like, oh, when is this going to end? <laughs> uh, you know, and, 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 and I think introducing uh, the uh, gender equality as part of the curriculum would be mandatory mm. and will speed the change that we're looking for sure. and will make sure that, like we said, the complaints of, you know, the, the lady in parliaments, do I feel represented? Mm. I mean, I feel like I. I will feel more represented when maternity leave increases and paternity leave is introduced. Mm. I'm just saying like, hey. That's a very interesting people. conversation <laughs> yeah. on paternity leave. Mm. Right, like <laughs> actually being given a bit more weight than it actually yeah. has right mm. now. Exactly. Uh, just I, our last tweet, you, hold okay. on to that thought for mm. your closing remarks. Um, this last tweet, I, I found it very interesting. Uh, and this person is talking about, unlike g gender equality, we, probably we should be taking, mm talking about priorities. gender priorities. Oh, That's wow. very interesting. Yeah. So instead of gender equality, you know, Priority. this and this will help oh, wow. um, in terms of equality and equity, two different things, but mm. priorities, you know, talking about what needs to be, you know, so already talking as if gender equality, a lot has been done. But I feel like, I feel like I, when it comes to gender priorities, mm. and unfortunately he didn't clarify exactly yeah. what yeah. he meant by that, exactly. but I feel like 
the conversation around equality and equity. And that's why I always talk about equity, because I feel equity is greater than equality. Yes, yes. Equity looks to looks at historical mm -hmm. uh, or legacy systems and tries mm -hmm. to correct them mm -hmm. to allow for an even, at least to make up for what has, mm -hmm. has been wrong. Uh, but coming back to his question and the previous question and what they talked about curriculum, I think the values around the curriculum need to also be assessed in schools. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a big challenge with, one example is the repercussions of teenage pregnancy and who it falls on. It falls on the girl. Most of the time. And, and the boy is scot free. Yeah, exactly. Usually, will carry on with his education. Exactly. Will carry on without stigma. Even, at, even at home. Yes. Even at home, the repercussions of um, if I'm a boy and I go and pregnant a girl versus me being a girl and falling pregnant, the repercussions in my home are different. Mm. And that's because the values associated with it. So, even when we go into schools and we try to teach to gender assess. equality, we need to assess the values yes. around how we treat each of those. And I think maybe that's what, he, what he's referring to when he talks of uh, priorities, gender priorities. priorities you know? yes. yeah. um, Charles, yes? Um, I want to talk about merit in my, in my closing remarks. Um, mm. Rwanda has proven, I mean, take an example of yourself, Diane. You're uh, Diana. Diana. <laughs> 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 I hope that's not a gender gap. <laughs> no, it's not. An extremely intelligent girl who's moderating this show and doing a fantastic job in your merit, not because you are a woman. Mm. Thank you. We've had very many leaders in our government and all over the world who are there in their positions because of their merit. Mm. Mm -hmm. I am going to, to advocate for something because of the concept, the Rwandan women empowerment concept, at least at an urban and leadership level, is tried and tested. Mm -hmm. Let's scrap this necessity to have a certain percentage of women in these positions of leadership. You know, you go to these, all these levels, from Mudugudu to Murenje to, when you're going through all this, and they say a certain percentage must be mm. women. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. I do not believe that that is the route mm. towards women empowerment. But it helps the process, mm. the inequality. It is only cosmetic. Mm. It will give an image of. that we empower women. Mm. And I'll give an example of my business. In my business, <coughs> about 78% of my staff are women. women. Mm. Because they're better at the job, not because they're women. They are not there because they are women. And I, and I, I prefer women. No, it's they are there because, <laughs> excuse me, right. mm. Mm. on merit. So uh, what I'm advocating for really is that uh, uh, it starts from the top. Mm -hmm. Let us look at women in their own merit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I got that. Um, closing remarks uh, from you two, and then Ephraim, if we still have time. Mm -hmm. Or did you give yours? I can give more closing remarks. Okay. <laughs> uh, Dominic and Dale, closing remarks very quickly before we close. Um, I think closing <coughs> remarks. I think let's start with the younger generation. I think he mentioned, let's start from the top, but the, the future is with our babies, our, the ones who will come to lead, to sit in this chair in the next 10 years. And looking at them, um, I was just thinking earlier, a young boy who's, a young girl who's talented has an avenue, has a route for, for you know, Miss Geek and all these things, beautiful things that are happening. And, and let's really look, what future are we creating for both children? Mm. Um, I'm Boys always for, yes, I'm always for both children, you know. It, it, the reason why it sounded like I was advocating for, for maybe the boy child was because it's left behind in all these statistics that I found out too. Um, so let's start from, the, from the, the, our future and, and change, all, change the language, change, change the way we speak about roles, change the way we tell little girls when there's a funeral, which yeah. means don't cry. Mm. And, and just that language itself. Um, let, let's raise them. Again, I will stress for, for, for structure, for formal documents, for both, you know. Um, research is being done by awesome, the awesome girl effect, and releasing a lot of structured things that help the girl child. Let's have the same for boys. For boy them effect. to grow, mm. <laughs> boy effect. Mm, Let's know. have them grow in, with the same amount of, of, of unique, individualized help for them, mm. you know. And they read and say, okay, 
this has been researched that I will probably go, go through this because someone has gone through and it's a book or it's a pamphlet. Mm. Let's raise them in a way that mm. we know that we won't regret. Mm. We won't say, okay, 20 years from now, it's now the boy child that has been so left behind that we're now coming back. Mm. And, and then we go, you know, so. I, I get that. Yeah. Our future. I know mm. Romrek does work with young boys and men. Uh, it would be interesting to see over the last decades what, where they've reached Definitely, with, their, yeah. with their research. And we're closing remarks there. Um, she almost touched everything, but to add on what she said, I think the most important thing I want to say is that um, I would like to quote a lady coach, Mamanda Adichie. She's a renowned feminist. So there's a book she wrote, and one of the rules she gives of her on how to raise a feminist son or daughter, she says the rule number 15, that because you're a woman does not guarantee anything. Yeah. So look, I want to tell the all the ladies out there that, you know, we have to work for it yeah. at some point, but because also they are able, yeah. right? Yeah. And also I want to talk about the generalization and the diversity that Ephraim talked about. We have to cherish like each person's individuality, as he said. Yeah. We have to cherish the idea of belonging, not fitting in society. Because the idea of fitting in brings about all these stereotypes, the implementation, the entitlement we talked about, the gender-based violence we talked about. So I think we should be able to belong, not fit in. So yeah, that's what I would like to say. Yeah, I think my closing remarks, and I'll try to keep them short. Um, and I know we didn't talk about this at length, or we didn't talk about it. Uh, but I just wanted to say, you know, anything driven by animosity and hatred yes. um, is never sustainable. Mm. Um, and don't confuse what I'm saying for an injustice can inspire your desire to do something. But when, you, when your desire for gender equality and, and gender equity and gender prioritization stems from a hatred um, or a dislike or a disdain for, for animosity towards something, it's not something that can be sustained. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why also the conversation is involve the men as well. Involve mm -hmm. the men as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, in conclusion, I would say I've learned a lot as well about how to create that equity, um, not just for the girl child, but for the boy child as well, mm -hmm. and ensure that we can arrive at that same point together. Thank you very much. This has been a very dynamic panel with very dynamic young people. Um, it gives me a lot of just really good, um, um, good to energy, see. Yeah. Good energy. <laughs> good vibes to see brilliant young people like yourselves, um, you know, tackling these issues. Uh, and it gives me hope that the next generation can really take on some of the things we're talking about here. Oh. So uh, this is what we've been talking about, gender equality and having a frank discussion with the young people here and having a, an overview of some of the realities on the ground for young people across this country. Um, and the key takeaways are more or less, you know, let's look at individuality, uh, let's look at stereotyping and cultural and religious beliefs and tackle these issues uh, amongst other things. It's an ongoing conversation, but uh, thank you for joining us and stay tuned for the next uh, version of The Square. You can a rebroadcast every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. on Rwanda Television. Thank you and see you very soon.